This week on Maker Update, an interactive music ring, the Asus Tinkerboard S, tech shops back on the chopping block, Google's vision kit for Raspberry Pi, ultra flexible sandpaper, and a servo movement recorder. It's Wednesday, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to the first Maker Update of 2018. I hope everyone had a great holiday. I had a fun break, but I am so happy to be back in my own groove here now. And there's so much news to catch up on that I really only have time for one project, but it's a super cool one. So let's get right into it. John Bumstead has made a number of projects I've covered on the show, including this interactive geodesic LED dome and this amazing interactive laser sheet generator. Well, John's back with another interactive LED music machine, but this is the most approachable build he's published yet. This design uses a sandwich of laser cut MDF sheets an Arduino Uno, some inexpensive addressable LEDs, and some copper panels to create the capacitive touchpads. What you get is a unique tabletop MIDI instrument that responds to touch with lights and spits out MIDI notes to any connected synthesizer or drum machine or computer. John includes all the code needed to load onto your Arduino, plus all the laser cut files for constructing the enclosure. What I love most about this is John's focus on honing his wild interactive instruments down to a build that demands less time and less money, while still delivering a great payoff. And how cool would this be to show off at a party? It's time for some news. The big news in project boards this week is that ASUS has announced their new version of their Tinker Board, the Tinker Board S. The original board sort of limped out from ASUS last year as a high-end Raspberry Pi competitor, offering a similar Linux-based single board computer juiced up with extra processing power, improved graphics processing, more memory, and better audio quality. The new board will have an even more powerful Cortex-A17 quad-core processor, 16 gigs of built-in storage, and four USB ports instead of two. It should be available in the first quarter of this year with a suggested price of $80, but probably selling closer to 60 like the first gen. Personally, at that price, Tinker seems like the wrong word for it. You're not buying this thing to play around. That said, if you're designing some high-end kiosk or interactive art installation where graphics and sound were a priority, this could be just the thing. In other news, if you haven't been following the tech shop drama, the chain of makerspaces was on the brink of bankruptcy in November and were thrown a lifeline in December with a possible buyer. But reports from both Adafruit and Makezine say that the purchase has been canceled, so things are back in limbo. It's a bummer, but seemingly not over yet. Over the holiday, Google released their AIY vision kit for Raspberry Pi. This was a bonnet made for the Raspberry Pi Zero W that allowed it to recognize objects using a connected camera module. So face detection, expression recognition, color detection, even pet detection. The whole kit retails for $45 and comes with a custom cardboard enclosure and a color changing arcade button Unfortunately, it sold out stupid fast. Hopefully there will be more available soon. Finally, I just have to celebrate that maker megastar Adam Savage posted a video documenting his build of the 3D printed Blade Runner binoculars designed by Instructables Jonathan Odom, AKA Jonatron. I featured John's original project 10 episodes ago and if you know this show, you know how much I love his work. I got such a vicarious thrill seeing John mentioned and celebrated by Adam Savage. It was also a nice validation for me knowing that sometimes I beat Adam Savage to showing you the cool stuff. Nice work, Jonathan. It's time for another cool tools review. This time we're taking a look at ultra flexible sandpaper by 3M. I got four sheets of this stuff for around $7 on Amazon and that's not cheap for sandpaper, but I'm going to show you why this stuff is special. And if you want to get some for yourself, using the Amazon link in the description helps support my videos and the Cool Tools blog. We're all familiar with sandpaper. Sometimes there's just no substitution for sanding something by hand. These flexible sheets aren't paper at all. The grit is backed by a smooth plastic film that feels like packing tape, but stretchy. It is the limpest, floppiest sandpaper I've ever used and honestly it weirded me out when I first tried it. It's a very different feel. But there are some huge advantages. The packaging states that it lasts 15 times longer than conventional sandpaper, but it doesn't say why. One reason is that it doesn't rip. You could destroy this if you really tried, but the plastic back would rather stretch than rip. It also doesn't crease. 
I can fold it, I can roll it up, I can form it around complex shapes, I can crinkle it up into a little ball if I want, but it just goes back to being this floppy sheet of sandpaper, so it's very versatile. It can also be used wet or dry since there's nothing to get soggy. The flexibility makes them resistant to clogging, and you can shake them out like a rag or whip them on a table if you need to knock anything loose. They're cool, I'm glad I have them. They come in a medium, fine, and extra fine grit. I've been keeping a medium sheet rolled up at my workbench that I use almost like a sanding rag. Mark from Cool Tools has been using these for sanding the wooden spoons that he whittles. You can use the Amazon link in the description to pick some up for yourself. And remember, you can see thousands of reader recommended tools like this at cool-tools.org. One more tip to share with you this week, over on Gareth Branwin's Tips of the Week column on Make, there are some great tips from Laura Kampf, Shawn Michael Reagan, and Jimmy DeResta, but the one I found most surprising was a tip from Simone Yetch. She shows off a $110 servo recorder box from Servo City. It's like a servo tester board, but you can connect and directly control up to four servos with it using the knobs and record your movements to an internal memory that can store up to three minutes of movement. When you're done, you kick it over into play mode and it will play back your servo movements just how you perform them. Compared to programming servos with code and trial and error, this is a quick way to work with animatronics or to get a robot arm to perform a routine. It's not cheap, but it's good to know about. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, get yourself some long lasting floppy sandpaper and subscribe to the email list to get these links sent out to you automatically every week. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.